child is still in the process of learning multiplication, but you notice that in the classroom, they start doing something different, that there's a word called array that is passed around a little more often. Your child's coming home saying, mom, we have to put this in arrays. Dad, we have to put this in arrays. Well, what, what that whole process and what that whole thing means is basically you're putting now objects in rows and in columns. As you know, Multiplication is grouping numbers. It's repeated addition, it's adding on. And arrays is something that visually makes this process a little bit easier. So when we're learning how to multiply using arrays, we're focusing on this whole idea of placing things, as you see, in rows and in columns. Right here, if this was the array we were looking at, we would say we have one, two, three, four, five in a row, so I'll put five here and in our columns we have one, two, three. So this is a five by three array or we could call it five times three. Now your child is le learning this concept and they're learning either two ways. They're either being able to add that up repeatedly, five, 10, 15, or they're going through the whole process of counting each. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. But at the end of the day, they are able to understand that the product is 15. And it, it's a real neat way of using your work. It's grouping all over again, except you're just grouping in specific rows and columns. Now, when we're using arrays, I will show you how to, to start teaching it. And again, like I will say with everything else, you want to start with this idea of concept. You want to start with the understanding of why we're doing it and, and how is it real. Um, and, the best, and the best ways of doing this are allowing your children to manipulate objects, such as anything you can find in your house. You can use, as you see in the picture, eggs, you can use candy, you can use toys, you can use pictures. Whatever you can find, you can use with these arrays, even shoes in, in a sense. So for the first one, we want to always locate the number of rows. How many rows do we have? And then secondly, we want to locate how many columns. And then from there, we'll find our product or our answer again. So in the first one, as you see, this is a dozen eggs. You and I know this is a dozen eggs. We know we have two rows of six, but how do you show or six rows of two, two rows of six? Now I will say this a lot of times. In my school, there's myself that teaches math and there's another teacher that teaches math. And we both, we know our rows and our columns. Rows go across, columns go up and down. But sometimes you have kids that kind of want to flip it around and at the end of the day, we show them which way is proper, but multiplication is an inverted operation. We can, we can multiply two times six and it gives us 12, or we can multiply six times two and it still gets us 12. If your child is having a hard time understanding which is row and which is column, that is perfectly fine and you can just sidestep that at this point and allow them to just learn it as best as they can, as best as they understand. Um, and as a teacher, I really, prefer parents to just allow them to use that misconception because at the end of the day they're still understanding the product and when it go when it's regard to understand the procedure we can get there so if we look at these eggs sorry for the sidetrack if we look at the eggs we see we have one two three four five six so we have six rows and in each row there are one two two in each column. Therefore, six times two, if you wanna count it, you can, but we already know it's 12. Please allow your child the opportunity to count. One-to-one -one correspondence is very important. They need to be able to touch one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's important for them because they can, they can put their hands on it, especially for those kinesthetic learners that have to touch something. Um, now, something that I want you to pay attention to, a common misconception I'll see, is when kids go through counting, and I'll go ahead and move to the next problem, we'll count, they'll count one, two, three, four. So they have four rows, and then they won't want to count these rows when they're counting down. So then they'll say one, two, three, four. That's not correct. Make sure they understand that they count every row and then they count that adjacent uh, column. 
So for this one, we see, and this is, please use the same words that I'm using. How many rows do you see? I see one, two, three, four. So I see four rows, good. The next one, how many columns do I see? And remember, this is the part where they sometimes, when they have their rows, they're like one, two, three, four. I got my rows. But they'll forget to add this one for the columns. Don't allow them to do so. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. So the number of columns, there are five. Now you can go four, eight, uh, 4, 8, 6, 12, 16, 20, or you can go 5, 10, 15, 20, or you can just count each and every one of them, 1, 2, 3, 4 to 20. But 4 times 5 shows the product is da, 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 20. So how can we use this with regards of when our students are seeing numbers? Well, if they can still understand that principle of rows and columns, they can put these numbers in rows and columns. And it'll go as such, all right? So I see four times four. I know I have four, in a, four rows and four columns. So I'm gonna use X's here. So four times four, one, two, three, Four. Now I'm gonna switch colors, at least I'm gonna try to switch colors to show you this misconception where I have my columns. I have one, two, three. Well, I wasn't able to switch colors as you see, but you can see this process, right? I just counted the three. A lot of kids will skip that four and add one extra here. Make sure you're on top of your child and, and allowing them to understand that, no, don't add that because you already have one right here for your column, one, two, three, four. So I'll continue, one, four, four. Now, I have an array of X's. So four by four, if you wanna count those up, it is 16. Again, allow your child the opportunity to count. Now I have six rows of three. And I'm gonna use circles this time. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. 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 Three. So I have six rows of three and my product is 18. Again, I keep repeating it because it is important. Allow your child the opportunity to count each and every one. Last one, I have two rows of eight. I'm going to use triangles. One, two rows. And I know my triangles are terrible. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, I missed the first one. That was really seven and eight. And if you count through them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Two times eight equals, let's see if I can stay here, 16. So now you have a raise. Make sure when you're doing this process, don't overwork your child. Sometimes they'll, they'll see these arrays and, and they'll really enjoy them. They'll really have an understanding of it. Don't overdo the process. They're getting a lot at school. Make sure you're keeping it relative 10, 15 minutes at home for the practice, all right? Thank you again for joining me on my learning block. Keep learning with me.